the book, Renegades, Bruce Springsteen. People talk about the work-life balance a lot, and when art is your work, is there such a thing as an art-life balance, or is everything blended? Yeah, yeah, no, there's got to be. I think it's like, like, I found it early on, sort of, it's like, loved my job, uh, great way to make a living, no way to live if you're a musician, <laughs> you know, so you got to watch your, you got to watch yourself there. You know, my job is, it's a great way to make a living. Mm -hmm. If you fully uh, subsume yourself in it, it's no way to live, you know. Uh, and there have been many, many artists previous to, previous to me uh, and, and, and my peers who didn't figure that out. And it, it can be very, very, very dangerous to you mentally, physically, uh, not cleaving between your, your work life and your, and your family life and your home life. You know, you've got to make some very uh, clear boundaries and distinctions if you want to live a full life in both of, those, both of those areas. Well, that is something you may not have known in 1975 when this album dropped. And... Uh, <laughs> Born to Run, a breakthrough moment for you. I understand you brought something to show us from this album. Oh, right. Somebody said, bring, show and tell, bring something. All right. So, all right, let me get a hold. This is the guitar. That is... <laughs> there it That's is. that guitar. That's the one. <laughs> I've, uh, I've played this guitar for 50 years. I bought, I bought it when I was 22, 22 years old, for $185 on Highway 34, I think, in Belmar, New Jersey, from a man, a man uh, from, from a, 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 a a great guitar man named Phil Patillo, and I've had it ever since. It's kind of a mutt. It's made up of two different guitars, but this guitar has been in every club, theater, arena, and stadium across America and most of the world. So uh, it's been around a bit. <laughs> Are you... Um... It's not the only guitar you play in concert, though, right? No. I what have... does it feel like when you go from another guitar to yeah. this one? Well, when this, this one gets in your th hands. This feels like my arm. So it's like if I, if I have this guitar, I, I don't have anything on. This is just a, this became an extension of my, of my actual body, you know. Anything else I pick up, it's a guitar, you know. And, uh, and uh, for some reason, I've played this for so long that it, that it, it just became a part of your, of your, your natural sort of physique and, and uh, but I don't, I don't play it much on stage these days because it's gotten, it's, I sort of put it a little bit out to pasture. It's done so much good work for me. That, Have you thought that, of putting uh, it out to stud? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should, you know. But, Here, uh, I'll take that for you. I'll, I'll, just, I'll, put, it back, I'll put it back. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Have you ever let John Stewart touch this? Uh, I don't believe John Stewart has touched that guitar. <laughs> <laughs> now, your fans are famously devoted. Are there any particular memories of, of fans uh, expressing their appreciation to you that come to mind? Yeah, there's been a few. Uh, the worst was after I jumped over the wall at Elvis's house. And I, which, long story short, I jumped over the wall at Elvis's house to see if Elvis was home. Uh, and was he? No, he was okay. in uh, Lake Tahoe. Okay. And then they threw me out. Uh, but I had a lot of fans doing that to me for quite a while. And then, of course, when I would chase them away off my front lawn, they would say, but you, you did it to Elvis, you know? <laughs> but uh, the stra one of the strangest, one of the strangest ones was I'm, I'm on my motorcycle with a friend of mine. We're coming from Lake Placid. It's, it's you know, hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of miles to get from Lake Placid. We're trying to, in an afternoon, get back to Jersey. And it starts pouring. And it's pouring, and it's pouring. 
and we're riding and we're just, you know, it's like pins and needles hitting you and we're soaked completely to the bone. I go through a toll booth, I'm stuck in traffic, I'm drenched, and a guy rolls down his window, hands me an eight by 10 and a pen. <laughs> like, so I signed it and handed it back to you. Guys in the track, we need my turn. We have to take another break, but stick around. We'll be back in a minute with more Bruce.